direct from the six, world-renowned, Canada's largest city, with Canada's biggest thinkers, visionaries, and hustlers. This is Startup Talk, featuring the founders, funders, innovators, and community leaders who've led Canada's startup ecosystem right here in Toronto. You'll hear the challenges, the failures, the successes. Toronto's Startup Podcast gives you the full story direct from the entrepreneurs and influencers who've made a difference. Now, the host of Startup Talk, the founder of Toronto Starts, the Startup Coach. What role does AI play in optimizing marketing strategies and how can startups leverage AI tools? It sounds like, in general, AI content right now is not great and people turn away from it pretty quick. But I sit back and say, it's all about the value. So if you have, it depends what you're writing about and it depends on the value. If you have, listen, I'm I'm, uh, finishing up the startup ecosystem in Toronto, series of pages that talk about venture capital, angel investors, all that stuff. So I'm going to have one page with a list of angel investors. You know, some of that's going to be generated by ChatGTP and some of that's going to be handwritten. But the key content there is the list of the angel investors, what they are, how to get to them and whatnot. So that will be valuable to people. And it doesn't really matter if that individual list was edited by ChatGTP or not, because the list is there and it looks good. But the content around it, if you're drawing conclusions, if you're doing this, if you're actually creating creative things. So the question is, where does AI fit in your strategy for marketing? Does anyone want to take that? Sure, I'll take So, and for me, it's really just about using it as a tool as opposed to the creator. So if you have an idea, you want to, you know, you want to try to flesh it out, make it actually better, then sure, throw your stuff in a chat GPT and see how that works out for you. But as to just go up and just type in and say, here, write me a blog post about this, or write me a LinkedIn post about this. And then just taking what it gives you and putting that up there, a lot of the times, People are going to be able to sniff that stuff out. I mean, it's, I can't explain how it happens. You, you just, when you read it, you can tell that it, it's, it's, it's written by chat GPT. I, I don't know the best way to describe it, but you can just tell. And so seeing stuff like that, all of a sudden that person now thinks you are not genuine. And, you know, especially on LinkedIn, I see this a lot where, you know, people who are using AI to make comments. And people don't like actually having comments be made by bots. That's just not it. And then content in general made by bots no, does not work for a lot of people. So they want to have authentic interactions and, and have authentic content made that speaks to them and help and resonates with them. And I just don't think you can get that directly from just pour, just saying, here's a topic to, to chat GBT and saying, and write, it, write something about this. Sorry, Mark, you muted. I just subscribed to a newsletter and just on a related note, the top of the newsletter had a disclaimer that said, this content was not created by generative GI, uh, generative AI or chat GPT. And it got me thinking that I think that there's a branding opportunity, a marketing opportunity for companies that will wave the flag for human powered content. And the idea that, you know, every company leans into ChatGPT right now, and they're using it in one shape or the other. But if you can stand apart and saying, we have writers, we pay them well, they write great content as part of our ethos, then you can leverage that as a way to stand out from the crowd, just as HubSpot stood out in the early days of uh, content marketing by simply writing a lot of content. So there's maybe a tip for some of those startups out there looking to get a competitive edge in some way. Naima, anything on this? I have mixed feelings. So, <laughs> because uh, I think, be, yeah, it, there is a lot of big feelings here, but if you're on time crunch and you need to, like, let's say you just can't get an idea out, I think it's a great tool. I've seen somebody use it and get themselves out of bunk within, like, if they had, like, they had something going right in that evening and they wanted to kind of think, and then I was like, um, you know, I can see, I can see that being great, but then. On the flip side, whenever people use it for captions, always, you know what chat GPT always gives you? It's always unlock your potential, empower your flow. Those are the key words that they use. And every time I have- You can spot them, yeah. Yeah, you can just spot it. Right now, obviously it's gonna get better with time. So I just have mixed feelings towards it. However, I think is AI something that you can use for, obviously it is affecting people 
who don't have the resources, of course, it's a great cheat code to kind of get the product. I don't know if it's going to be the, you know, genuine, of course, all the creative, it's u- unique, you know, the birth from a muse, it's not that, but it's something, you know, for a company, especially that don't have any, like, especially if you don't speak English. Like, for example, I was just talking to a founder from Ukraine and he didn't speak English. He didn't have anybody here. So he uses ChatGPT to help him kind of with that portion, like writing emails. And of course, it's going to sound very like dry and not very, you know, personalized, but it's, it's something that can be taken at face value as it is, you know, for what it is. Versus that, you know, adding that emotion and getting people to take an action and all that, of course. So I have a mixed feeling because I can see its use in its place, but at the same time, uh, yeah. At the same time for creative work, for example, I feel like it's, uh, I feel and I think that it's something that ethically shouldn't be used if you're trying to put something out there as a creator. So I guess I'm probably the person here that uses it most for uh, my marketing stuff since everyone else uses more against it. But let me tell you some of the, the things I use for it so that, you know, people can use them in context and condemn me. I don't really care, but you can decide whether those are use cases for you. One, it really helps with trying to decide if you're trying to figure out what to write. You can throw some stuff into chat GTP and it can come up with a whole bunch of ideas on, you know, here are a bunch of articles that you know are in demand or based on high volume keywords or whatever. And that'll give you a starting point. Um, I use it for creating a lot of my tweets because I run events. I put out eight podcasts a week. Plus we have, you know, four of these and four many live events. And so I got so much crap to promote. I use it saying, here are these events, create five, once they have the full description, create five tweets to promote this event because I don't have the time. Now, if I have a bunch of guests coming together and I usually try and create uh, different social media packages for each of them, separate that is different from everyone else. So they're not repeating it. I'll say, okay, go ahead and create me 10 tweets. That'll be from Daniel's point of view and 10 tweets from Mark's point of view, because it'll do that for me. And I don't have the time and people can curse me for that or not, but I, you know, it's a easy thing for me to do. I don't consider that uh, creative content where you're actually giving valuable thought. I mean, it's just, you know, here's the description. Here's who's coming. Here's this, you know, give me five things to promote this. So I do a blank page. I like AI for if you're doing SEO and content mapping, there are some great tools to map out how that whole content pillar should appear on your page at a high level. Here's the name and here's the URL it should be. So it all maps together and then you can go create those. So there's some great tools to help you get started and uh, fix what I call blank page syndrome. Like, oh, I don't know what to do. But at some point you need to take it over. Otherwise it becomes that crap that everyone else sees that no one wants to see. So that's not going to I, I want to say one thing. I, I just remembered something. So if you want to respond to a review, negative review, and if you have some words that you probably don't want to use publicly, what you can do is you can write out your heart and then put that in chat <laughs> and be like, hey, write this in a professional manner. <laughs> I think that. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that's funny, Niamh, because I got this new technique called dog-powered AI content. And basically what it involves is me walking my dog yeah. and then I'll open up my, my voice memo on my iPhone and I'll just start talking about something that I'm interested in, you know, something, some topic that I'm interested in. So I'll ramble for a couple of minutes, then I'll upload the, the audio to ChatGBT and say, write me a blog post. Don't change the content, just make it sound good, right? This kind of tone. It's, it's quasi authentic content. But it's a way of, of taking your a video that you shoot or audio and leveraging ChatGPT, but not having ChatGPT actually write it for you, right? Out of the blue. So mm, lots I of like different it. ways to use it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to steal that one, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. So, you know, 20 minutes to walk your dog, you can come up with two or three LinkedIn posts right then and there. I, but see, that is using it as a tool, as a way to, you know, help you do what it is you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. But if you're setting it up in such a way that you just want to write content and whatever it spits out, you're going to claim as your own and say that this, these are my thoughts. I think that's that's a bridge too far for me. 
Yeah. Outside, oh, and outside of text-based content, I'm just going to say the other day, so we, we have our team meetings and then where we just kind of do, just look at different AIs. And one of the ones that I was interested in kind of like exploring is Hey Jen for, you know, where you can put an audio, you can put the t- transcript of like a testimonial and then you would generate a video um, and it would be like a person doing the testimonial. Of course, it's not something that we're doing, but I just thought that was interesting because that means that if it can be done, there's going to be testimonials out there that are going to be AI generated and video testimonials, you know, and I thought that was interesting. Well, I don't know about you know, that one. <laughs> I, want to debate, I, think- I know that we're not debating whether or not it's something that we should use ethically, but it's just something that I've seen like like right on the it's screen. It's interesting. I like the concept, back. but, you know, let's face it. As soon as we, the, you know, no one's going to trust an AI generated recommendation video. Yeah, no, no, 100%. Final words over to you, Mark. And where can people find you, contact you, reach out for you to find out more? Uh, LinkedIn for sure. Uh, write a lot of content on LinkedIn. I guess that's going to drive my SEO if uh, the MS uh, words are, are on the ball. Uh, just look for Mark Evans or Mark Evans Fractional CMO. And my website is marketingspark.co. And do you have any events coming up that you want to talk about? I should. I should be doing better marketing myself. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, <laughs> I just yeah. didn't want to forget anything. No, no, that's it. That's it for now. Naima? Uh, that's funny, Mark. Um, you you know, by you being present here, that you, that's marketing enough. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Greg, for that. That's You're my event. You're my event, my event coordinator. Fabulous. I also find that when I first popped in here, I saw that, um, uh, you know, Mark had his name, but also his company name on the bottom. So I really liked that. So I went back and, you know, did that. So he he, he knows what he's doing there. Um, for me, I would say my last words would be just thank you for having me here, Craig. Um, you know, Craig mentioned his events. I honestly love, love, love startup uh, events. Um, and I would say that you can find me at the next one that's happening this Thursday. So if you come, uh, come there, I'll be there. And of course, uh, you can search up my name, Social Sherpa on YouTube. And if you feel so kind, uh, or if you just want to learn more about social selling, you'll see a playlist there that teaches you every single step of social selling. So if that's something that you want to use for bootstrap marketing, it's there. So again, uh, YouTube, Social Sherpa. Yeah, stop playing on social and start selling. Mm. Trevor? Oh, well, I'm glad that I actually did to, was able to finally get through to this. I got to figure out what's going on with my computer. But um, I have, I'm really happy that uh, we were able to do this. I have a sales strategy workshop coming up next week with you, Craig, actually. Absolutely. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, and you can find me at marketinggenioushq.ca. Um, that's pretty much about it for me. I mean, the biggest the one takeaway that i have for everybody who's listening figure out who it is you want to talk to because once you figure that out then you can figure out about the best messaging that's going to work for them fantastic and danielle important one for sure uh i i will add to that if you're speaking to everyone you're resonating with no one so that's important (laughs) um Uh, I have a series of workshops coming up that are more so for social purpose uh, businesses um, and organizations. So I have one, I have a few coming up uh, basically every Monday. So you can check that out. My page is called The Good Growth Company. Um, We have a free series uh, online, different topics. And uh, yeah, like I said, um, content that actually speaks to your audience, but then has a purpose. Don't just put out content for the sake of it. Um, think of the intention behind all of your content as a as a startup, but try to invest in your own personal brand because thought leadership, uh, you, you can't ignore it. A lot of people don't like to put their self out there, but if you're a founder, invest in your own content, not just your startup's content. So that's, that's where I'll uh, leave you all tonight. Thank you for having us, uh, Craig. That's great advice. When we did the investor session last week, we had Graham Barlow on and he suggested that when you start, start building your personal brand first, market everything as your personal brand, because if you sell or leave the company, you still have that personal brand rather than um, having to start from scratch again. So great advice, Daniel. 
All right, torontostarts.com for everything else that we do. Startupdrinksto.com for startup investor drinks. All those links will be uh, wherever you're watching this in the show notes or in the podcast and links to everyone here's LinkedIn and whatever links they're going to send me tonight or tomorrow morning, I will include in all the show notes. What I'm going to do, thank you everyone for attending. I'm going to break this up into several sessions for the podcast um, and a, a few different videos as well as one big long video that'll go on our YouTube channel and I'll send everyone the links for that. Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching. This has been great and we'll talk to you all soon. This has been Startup Talk, Toronto's startup podcast. For more exclusive content, the episode vault, and to be part of Toronto Starts community, visit torontostarts.com. Get your name on the newsletter mailing list and check out our upcoming events. For more episodes, subscribe now. And please recognize the time and work behind the scenes put into connecting you with the biggest visionaries, entrepreneurs, and innovators in Toronto by leaving a five-star review. Join us for more next episode from Toronto's most active entrepreneur and startup community on Startup Talk.